Alrighty, well welcome everyone. It's 5 o'clock on Tuesday, May 21st for the Middlesex Select Board meeting. Um, welcome to our guests. As a reminder, we don't need to say who you are unless you want to talk and then you announce your name. Um, if you are interested in talking and if you're a resident of Middlesex. Um, okay. Approving the minutes of May 7th, 2024, regular meeting, action likely. Are these the May 7th one? Yes. Okay. A motion? I would make a motion to approve. Randy moves and Zara seconds. Second. Any discussion? All righty. All those in favor of approving the May 7th minutes, say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. Um, approving the agenda for today, May 21st, 2024, for a regular meeting. Action likely. Is there a motion? Motion. Uh, hold on. Sarah, Sarah, did you say we needed to amend it for that or no? No. No. Okay. okay. All right. Zick. Uh, Zick. Vic. Vic moved and names. Peter seconded. I like that new name for you. <laughs> And no discussion or amendments or anything? Okay. It's like a couple minutes. All those in favor of approving the agenda for today, May 21st, say aye. 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 Okay, aye. the ayes have it. We, we can keep going. All right. It's, oh, 505, we're a little ahead of schedule, but we have a highway department update. Um, I did actually um, want to potentially not necessarily amend the agenda, but um, on the 545, which is um, the meeting with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and hazard mitigation funding opportunity. I think that sort of falls under our town road subcommittee. Yep. So we'll just have that conversation now. Um, and then uh, and then move on to the Middlesex Fire Department and then on to other business. Does that make sense to everybody? Sure. So okay. you want me to start? No, we'll let um, Eric uh, go with and Vic go with the highway department update and what they've been working on. And then when it's time for the town roads committees, we can talk about the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Okay, start off with our trucks. Uh, we got the international back and it's working. Uh, that was a wiring issue, it was not a sensor. There was an actual frayed wire or whatever it was. Uh, the freight liner's still down, have not worked on that yet. The Kenworth, uh, we thought at the original that it could be a possible uh, injector. Found out it was something internal with the engine. Um, they are replacing said engine under warranty. And I got confirmation today that it's sitting, the new engine is sitting at their shop and they should be starting on it either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Hopefully it'll be done within a week or two. How many miles are on that air? 21,000. That's terrible. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that's our brand new truck. Correct. What is wrong with the engine? Something internal failed. I'm not really sure. Is there any warranty? Yeah, it's all under warranty. Oh, it's all under warranty, yes. okay. But even still, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Yep. Does it have anything to do with our wear and tear, or you think it's just? I think it was just a failed part. And okay. we just got it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, our second round of grading is about half done. Uh, we've been hauling gravel to the shop. Um, we chipped some brush. We. Replace the culvert on a section of class four off from uh, Notch Road uh, that was inaccessible to vehicles other than a small car. Uh, anything wider than that, you wouldn't be able to get around it. Uh, then I would like to talk about our excavator. Uh, I've got two prices uh, with two machines. One is through Anderson, Vic and I talk about this. Uh, the Anderson price comes in at uh, 195. Um, Vic, I got a new number from Borgards today on the setup we wanted, and um, that number comes in at 182 for a dis difference of $13,000. And I'm sorry, what's the 182? Who's that? That is Borgards. It's a case uh, 145. Beauregard. Yeah. Beauregard equipment. Okay. Beauregard equipment. Thanks. Yeah. Is that a 140? It's a 145, yeah. What is 145? That's the size of the machine. It's just the number. Are they both 145s? They're both equipped, uh, equivalent sizes. 
Okay. And what is, is Anderson Komatsu? Anderson is Komatsu, Case is uh, Barbara's. And, 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 and when you did that, you, uh, so the two machines are pretty comparable. Very. Yep. They both have til uh, tilting wrist. Yep. Uh, power, what's the word I want? Power tilt. Power tilt, which is no hoses. Okay. To cast. <coughs> So, and then you can use, but you, they both have a thumb? Correct. Now? Yes. Okay. That's What's a thumb? Thumb. Yeah. It's a metal apparatus on the arm that allows you to pick gotcha. up material. And Where Sarah. Before, before we had, we were talking about a bucket that opens up like a drop bucket. Um, like a clamshell. Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So, and so they both have the same both appendages. Have the same, yes. <laughs> so, Sarah, the Anderson is a Komatsu, and the Beauregard's is a Case. Those are the brands. I didn't understand that. C A S E? Yes. 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 Thanks. So, the, is the thumb for helping with trees? That's why we need a tree grabber. or whatever. whatever solid materials you need to pick up. But it'll have a shovel too, right? Yes. Okay. And what is the so, lead time on that? Or what do you hope to uh, I'm not positive about Anderson, but I know Case has one sitting in their shop and they just need to put the stuff on it. Okay. Yes, Peter? So, you know, this this is a hard thing, but uh, one of the things we, I guess we want to be sure of is if there's no significant difference between the machines, then my inclination would be to go and save the money. But the other thing we want to be careful of is that we've got a, a reputable dealer who's going to be able to be responsive when we have breakdowns, which we always seem to have breakdowns, no matter whether the equipment's new or old or whatever it is. So is there any, is there any significant difference between the dealerships? I don't believe so. Not to my so you would consider the both, Eric? You would consider the both to be reliable, dependable. I would, I would, I would, I would say they're in the same field of each other. Correct. Yeah, whatever they are, they are. And how about availability of parts for the case versus the Camacho? You can get them pretty easy, either one. It's the same. So as far so, as so, what I'm, what I'm hearing is. Uh, they're equivalent machines, equivalent dealers, equivalent parts availability, whatever that means. Uh, hearing, hearing nothing else, I would be in favor of saving the money, but I'd be curious to see what other people have to say. Randy? Is, does Bogrides have a, another location other than New Hampshire? Like, is there something? Colchester. Colchester, Colchester they're out yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, and I was thinking proximity for service work. Um, um, and they, for warranty work, they come out and they do not charge a travel travel time, like John Deere does. And is the length of warranty similar for both machines? Same hours. Yep. What is that? Two thousand hours. Which is how much in years do you think could be? I, mean, I would say a few years. A few years, yeah. No, we're not going to do two thousand hours a year. Is there a year? Cap? Yeah. Uh, yes, five years is the cap. 2,000 hours or five years? 2,000 for what, the warranty? The warranty for both. Okay. Um, so. Experience with machines, like, I mean, you've got. Everybody that's got a case is happy. I don't know if anybody has got a okay. Peter? Well, we have a bucket loader from them and it's, it's yeah. been good. So, yeah. I mean. From Komatsu? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were good for that. Yep. So Kamatsu is 195 and Case is 182. Yes, Peter? Uh, yeah. I, 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 guess I'm, I guess I'm good. It's, it sounds like it's their, their equivalent machines. They operate in the same way and all that. Is there any, any preference in terms of operation or comfort or any, anything to distinguish the two of them? They're all new. I know uh, when we tried out the Case, it was liked 
by both Jay and I. Okay. And that's the cheaper one? No. So was there, and Cheryl, maybe you can, I know you don't have to talk, but would you? We, we, are, we approved in the budget for July 1 the 200000 So do we need to wait to purchase that until? It wouldn't be a payment for the first year, right? But we're not doing a payment. We're just paying cash. Oh. No. No. no what, what were we doing? I can't remember. We're, we're going to make payments on it. We're going to make payments on it. So we approved up to 200000 as a bond. Right. No. What? It's permission no to get a loan. Not a bond, but a loan. Right. A permission well, to get a loan. Okay. So there won't be a problem if you order it now. Okay. And does that fall under the same as like it is with the trucks that, you know, essentially you're You've got a year before you start, so if we do it now, it's not an impact on that, or it's just different with the loan, where we're starting to make payments immediately, 30 days after the execution of the loan. That's a you question there, because <laughs> I haven't talked about. Uh, I don't know. My understanding. I think, what we, I think what we usually do is take out a series of one-year loans, so. Yeah. They become due at the end of the year, so if we if we did it now, uh, we would have a loan payment due a year from now. If we waited until July first, that would spin it forward into a whole other uh, budget period. And I guess that's a question. If we if we place an order now for delivery July first, is that a possible thing to do, or is there would they not hold it for two months? Or, or? Well, all they need is a letter of intent. They need a letter of intent. Let me just, uh, Paul Sermonera has a comment. Yeah. Because I would recommend if we can, I mean, I know I know we'd like to have it today, but it's pretty enticing to avoid a payment for a whole additional year. Yeah. Paul Sermonera. Um, hey, guys, and, and I don't mean to muddy the, muddy the waters this far into it, um what is the replacement schedule or what would the replacement schedule for this machine be if purchased in 24. i think it's 15 15, 15 years i believe paul i'd have to look at the uh cip and double check but i'm pretty sure that's what we've got it slated for okay i was just curious oh i'm sorry liz go ahead keep going um so the only reason i ask is I know that it's been expressed that we'll be doing less heavy road work given um, what was said at, at the, the town meeting. Um, so originally when that our, our current machine was purchased it, purchased, it was, you know, the intent was to use it pretty extensively for mud season mitigation stuff. So if it, it's going to be used for strictly maintenance, ditching, and things like that. Um, it just seems like it, it, the exploration of potentially a, a lightly used one may be a, a better option given we've had this one 10 years. It had, I forget, four or 5,000 hours when we'd originally bought it. I recognize that we've put some money into it. Um, we're talking a difference of $100,000, though, for a machine that's going to get used less than uh, than the last one was. Um, so I was just, just curious. I'm not, not, yeah, just for conversation's sake. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, Zara? I was just going to also say that um, it, I know that the, the machine is budgeted on the capital improvement plan um, for either 10 or 15 years. Randy, I think, is looking it up right now. Um, I'd rather have the equipment we need to do the things that we need going forward um, because I don't know that we are slowing down on that, on, on well, improving roads. Yes, Vic. <laughs> Please raise, speak. Raise your hand. Yeah, uh, yeah, Paul, I, I am the one that said that. I didn't know if we were going to, uh, with uh, the... With, uh, you know the the invention of the subcommittee that and all the interest that's uh, going on. Uh, I mean, we potentially could do it. Uh, could do a lot of work with it. Uh, we could, let's not say a lot of work. Let's say uh, uh, we could you know do some uh, 
total uh, rebuild uh, of the subgrade. Um, I, I, we really haven't done a, a lot of large volume in it with it for what, the last two or three years, three or four years? So, I mean, I would question whether you want to go out 15 years. 15 years seems like a long time. Well, given the state of, I might also add to Paul's comment that things used to be made better, right? And they're just not made like they used to be. So yep. getting a used one may not be as beneficial. And I would like to see, um, because we have this road committee, we have some potential funding opportunities. I would like to see us doing more of our own repairs if it's feasible with the road crew, right? Not to say that we put everything on the back burner, but it'd be a lot cheaper to use our road crew and hire someone to cut brush than it would be to hire dirt tech to go and do it for $10 million. Also, since we've figured out that in kind can also mean work versus mm -hmm. capital. Mm -hmm. So when we're matching any grants we get, 25% can be in-kind work. So Depends on the grant, but for that big one, yeah. Yes, Peter. So I remember that we had a discussion a while ago, maybe uh, last fall, about the idea of getting a smaller excavator. And while I don't remember every detail of that discussion, I remember that I believe our conclusion was for the potential difference in price, it wasn't worth it, and it was better to have the uh, the larger machine with more capability, more digging depth, more uh, more everything. Now, if, you know, if the world has turned in the last six months, and we want to reconsider that. That's fine. I just hate to uh, replow old ground if we don't need to. Vic, and I guess not... just one other quick question. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Is there an extended warranty available? Assuming we're purchasing a new machine, not like you would get on trucks, no. But excuse me, not like you would get on the trucks, no. He said not, not so like you would get on the trucks. Like, is there any extended warranty or no? <clears throat> uh, Five years. I asked for that and they did not give me any, so there is not. Well, it's five years or twenty yes. thousand. Or five years. Two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. All I, all I would ask you to do is just reconfirm that because if there isn't if there is an extended warranty available and the price is reasonable, we should consider it for all the reasons that we all know. All our new stuff seems to break with the same regularity as the old stuff. Yes, sir. I'm just saying. Sure. I just I just like to be sure that they're truly even if it's even if it's an aftermarket uh, warranty, not through the manufacturer. I I like to know what the terms are on the price. Okay, Eric will ask. Yes, Vic, you now have the floor. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, yes, we did look into that about a smaller machine. A smaller machine will really save you a lot of money, like $100,000. Oh. Uh, it, it, but Eric doesn't like them. He doesn't like the fact that he can't dig out of the back of a truck. No. Uh, even though you can pick the blade up, uh, I mean, pick your machine up with the blade, front blade, and raise yourself up. It would just take everything so much longer to do. Yeah. I mean, he just doesn't like it, so there's no sense <laughs> of buying something they don't like. But uh, we did look into, Eric looked into uh, looking at a used machine, and there wasn't, if I'm, was correct me if I'm wrong, there's not a lot out there that was really good shape to buy. No, you were, you were buying what you're getting rid of. Right. And did, did we get anything for this? I know you've mentioned it. I just don't remember. Twenty-eight thousand to, to them. Mm -hmm. They take twenty. They take it for twenty-eight. Okay. And that so that price includes yes. the trade-in. Yes. This price includes the trade-in. Correct. That is the final ticket price. Is that what was budgeted? Did you get that, Sarah? Yep. One fifty nine for the Kamatsu and uh, one eighty two for the case, and that both prices include trade in them. One ninety five for the Kamatsu. One ninety five, not one fifty nine. No. One ninety five. One ninety five. Okay, thanks. And that includes a twenty eight k trade in for right. both of them. For both of them. Both companies say twenty eight k. Yeah. 
Uh, well, no, Kamat Anderson was going to give us a little bit more, but it still was the price the, was the, the bottom high. line was the bottom low. line was much better. Okay. Um, so, Eric, do you think that there's hope that the road crew would be able to do some of the work? Can you do Ken Davis? Can you turn him, yep. please? Um, he just made, yeah. Do you think that there is hope that of sort of revisiting and perhaps through the leadership of the subcommittee re it, revisiting, reworking, you know, down to the surface, some bad areas. Depends on the, the scope of it and the amount. Right. I, I'm actually not in favor of them doing more construction work. You know, I'm, while the town crew, you know, may be capable of doing some of that, I think it's more efficient to actually bring in folks who, and let these guys focus on the maintenance of the roads. Um, I don't want to be put in a position where, you know, we're deferring the maintenance and we're coming off from the town plan to focus on major mitigation efforts like we did in the past. I think it's just a, a recipe for disaster. I think, I think it puts us behind to a point where you can never really catch up. That's that's my take on the construction versus the maintenance piece of the road Vic first. scope. Oh, but yes, Vic. No. Thank you, Liz. I the the whole idea of doing the reconstruction is all based, I believe, on getting grants because uh, it's quite expensive uh, when you when you look into it. Uh, you know, Eric and I went over a few rough numbers this morning, and uh, we so, you certainly don't have it in your budget. But uh, also, uh, you know, it's one thing to do uh, like a you know a four or five or three, four hundred, five hundred foot section a year, and then there is to do you know a lot. Right. Where <coughs> so. I think I think it's asking too much of the road crew. Let, I, I personally feel like we should let them focus on yeah. the maintenance end of of there. We often pile on, you know, uh, duties that, quite frankly, are are outside of the the job scope that we've hired them for. Right. So I mean that's that's my take. That's fine. That's good. Yes, sir. Um, we were hoping the committee that with what's going on with Dirt Tech right now and how many roads are being handled by Dirt Tech, you know, by outside sources, that the road crew might have time to do a couple hundred feet here and there that need to be done. That's just what we're looking into uh, for the road crew. We've made, you know, we're making a list of what does need to be done because you're right. But the, you know, Eric and I are going to be driving around. I'm going to be filling out some preliminary grant ideas, but we we're still on the hook for six million dollars worth of FEMA that have hasn't been paid back. So we don't have the money to to go and do things right now. So it's. I guess my question then is just going back to what Paul said. Do we need if if we're really just doing maintenance, do you need a $200,000 excavator? I'm not sure what maintenance, maybe you do, you know. Um, still got to do the state, we still got to ditch, we still got to stone line, we still got to... So all that all stuff is like, an, that's, that's is that's excavators, yeah. okay. And we'd be set up just in case. There just in case. There are a couple case. hundred feet here and there that the road crew could dig into. Or do an in-kind <laughs> work, potentially. That's right. Yeah. I'm just going to remind, refresh the select board's memory that the the voters did approve the purchase of financing over 15 years in excavators, so that starts on July 1st. Years. Okay. So you could theoretically, you know, purchase it now. As long as the gotcha. payments don't start until after July 1st. Which they usually don't for. Right. So I mean, it's just saying month. that you, you've got the authorization to get that. Yeah. That that would affect this upcoming fiscal uh, year budget. Yeah. Okay. In yes. four or five days, we're going to be in June 1st anyways, and they don't have to pay yeah. for 30 days, so I think it's a mute. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I, I will say, just to answer Paul's question, I did verify that it is 15 years. Um, originally, the excavator purchase was slated in uh, budget year 26. Um, so we're doing it a year early um, because of the condition of the existing excavator and uh, the repair costs that it would take to put into that to, to get it through another year. Just, just to come full circle on that. Thank you, Paul. I mean, I'm calling everybody by the wrong name. <laughs> Randy. Okay, so in the interest of time, Zara, do you want to share? Um... Wait, oh, actually, we haven't done FEMA yet. Do, do you guys, are you, are you interested in giving him authority to purchase this? Yes. Or, you know, do you want to make a motion on that? Or? Oh, uh, I would love to make a motion yeah. on moving it forward so that Eric can buy the machine for 182. Which machine? Oh, the 82? 182. Okay. Mm -hmm. Case 145. The case yeah. 145. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, Vic seconds it. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of Eric making the, and with the, um, with, with the, uh, that he's going to request information about extended warranties. Um, say aye. 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 Okay. The ayes have it. Okay, so how about before Zara you jump in the FEMA uh, dirt tech update? How's that going? They just started yesterday. Oh. So um, yesterday they did three culverts and did some ditching. Today he planned on getting six done. I don't know if that's the case or not. On May see Let me see. Yeah. Have we got any funding, Sarah? Um, let me ask your treasurer. Oh. We, as of today, got $189,186.03. 189 what? 189, $189,186.03. Three? Where's that come from, Carol? Here. $457.50 with one and $180,728.53. That's that one shovel of dirt that was under the hole over, over there, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> So remember how we talked about you guys, refresh my memory, I need like a binder of all of the things that we talked yeah. about, um, where we had to potentially pay back 50% 50 to the bond. Did we get the bond? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, so. We have to pay back the $94,593.02. <laughs> you have the number. I do. <laughs> Cheryl, you're so good. So 94000 plus to the bond, Vermont Bond Bank. Yep. OK. And how much did we end up borrowing from them? I forget, 100? Uh, do you remember? 1.5 and change, I think, yeah. was the yeah, number. Yeah, 1.5. So it's a while before. The line of credit was 1.5, right? And then three, three million dollars, I oh, think yeah, total. Right. That's right. But I think we ended up uh, spending 1.5, almost 1.6. You might as well call it 1.6. Right. Um, but what did the bond bank give us? Yeah. They didn't give us. No, no, no they was like, I think they paid like they paid it, or they didn't give us anything. They paid it to the bank. Oh. And I don't have that number off the top. Okay. Of so it's like 980,000 dollars. Okay. So and. That loan from the bank comes to due in August, but some of it's been paid off by the Vermont Bond Bank, mm -hmm. and we're paying the Vermont Bond Bank first, half of it, and then in August, I guess we'll see where we're at. August, yeah. yeah, okay. Probably have to refinance at that Yeah, point. refinance, or maybe we'll get more PIMA money. Maybe we'll get, like, millions, <laughs> and that'll solve our problem. All right, so, okay, <laughs> when will they start billing us, Dirt Tech? Like every other week, every week, every month? No, it won't be every week. Okay. No. no. They have a monthly schedule, yeah. and actually I have it downstairs. So they go by road by road, and then they have a month, and then so like, it'll say like one week, for seven days, it's like $90,000. So it has like a little payment breakdown. It depends on where they're at at that time. Okay. So they're going to send us a bill for $90,000 potentially. And we are going to say, 
we're going to pull it from potentially some of the FEMA money we've got or from the line of credit that's been paid off? Or can we not draw on that anymore? I think we can. Well, we can, I think we can draw on that still. Yeah. And draw on it through the, the when it's due. Through, the, yeah. through when it's due. So are we worried? Well, right now we have $1.4 million in our checking account. Okay, but 838 952 has to get to go to the school. Good school. So then, you know, then it's time for And that balance that we just have includes those payments. Oh, and those payments that she just mentioned, the one nine, the 189, 186. So 1.4 million half let more than half of it is going to the so school we've got like four hundred thousand dollars that's usable right but really it's not any budgeted money let's remember that none of this is budgeted money right. this is money that right. we're hoping we get back when we get from fema i mean we knew we were going to run into this i just keep having to remind ourselves that I mean, I don't think we have any other choice, but, and we've talked about this in the past, exploring options of financing as we move forward. Right. Prior to, you know, the, the due date for the line of credit that we've got and um, having a plan as we move closer to that. And we still owe Kellogg Hubbard Library, the 34th, whatever thousand that is, it's on one of those sheets. And then we have, um, we haven't done any of our fund transfers because we're holding on to that money as long as we can. Yeah. Before we just transfer to the bridge fund and okay, all those other yeah the building funds. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you for that update. Um, anything more about Dirt Tech? No. Uh, the only thing I have to add is that um, I think we need to have a conversation about the four tens. Going back to them like we've been doing. The what? Four ten hour days. Oh, four ten hour days. Before we before we do that, may I ask you, um, I'm getting a lot of questions about dirt tech schedule. Can I get an can I get dirt tech schedule to give to people? It sound sounds like Cheryl has a schedule of no, where they're gonna be and what they're gonna bill, right? We do, it's a payment. we do have it's a schedule. Payment. It's a payment schedule though. We it's need to be able to say when, where are they gonna be next Yeah, week? but isn't that payment schedule tied to the roads that they're working on? Yes. That's what I heard. Okay, all right. And, uh, and Eric could also yes, there provide is, you there with- is, There is a, uh, a potential list, you know, obviously it's gonna have some wiggle room, but yes, they did put out a list. Of, when they would be where. Is that something we can post on Front Porch Forum as like, this is a draft. I would like to put it on our website. Yeah. I can locate that. Steve sent it to me. I have, I have it. Oh. It's subject to change. Okay. Yeah, I think you just want to, you just want to say that this is, you know. Yep. Uh, Preliminary. Subject right. to change. And, and this is where they expect to be. Right. right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so four 10 hour days. Mm -hmm. I would like to go back to that like we've been doing in the past. Okay, so you're here to request yep. to do the four 10 hour days like yep. we talked about. Okay. Um, is there anything that anyone has to ask Eric about that or have concerns about? What? Yes. Yes, Vic. When do you want to go to four 10 hour days? I would say starting next week. After Memorial Day? Yes. Till when? Uh, till November. November? No. No way. Why do, why do you think that you have to have four 10-hour days? I think it's a benefit that was that was given to us. It's not a benefit. It wasn't? No. no. It's not a benefit. It's not a benefit? No. So what, what objection do you have to working five days a week? Well, we put in a lot of hours in the wintertime. It's nice. Okay, uh, Vic, yes, the number, yeah. you talk through the chair. Yeah. And if you want to speak, you raise your hand. I, I will in a second. Okay. Um, so. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, sorry. I apologize. Um, so Vic has concerns um, about the objections to five days a week. And Vic, can you... Um, can you articulate why you have issues with the 10 hour days? Well, <clears throat> yeah, I can. Because um, there's a lot of stuff, especially this summer, it's going on. It, 
It's five days a week. And um, that has to be addressed by you. I mean, Dirt Tech's here. I mean, they're always calling on you. You just got a, you just got a, a requisition to go with Jer uh, Zara to do that. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff, and, and I, don't, I don't think there's any advantage of, of 10-hour days uh, at all. I don't think you, you say that. It, that's always comes up that, well, we work hard in the winter. You do. I'm not saying you don't, but you, you also get paid for it. And have you looked at all the other things that you get working, working for throughout the year? With what? A good salary. Yeah. Okay, you get a lot of time off. If you don't have enough time, we don't penalize you. We let you build it back. Um, you get all your, your uniforms. You get garbage disposal. You get a truck to drive back and forth. That's worth a lot of money. So I don't think, I mean, I can go on and on, but I don't think you that it's just, well, we only want to work four tents. And I know it has been in the past. I don't, if the rest of the board wants to go along with it, I don't have so much of an issue. I do have an issue with it, but I don't, like it's to. no way, no way that it should go to till November. No way that it should ever go to November. Because you get into the time that, As you that, uh, you're getting into the time like, that, uh, you know, it's dark until 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, thanks, Vic. Uh, Peter? So, I'd just like to remind all the members of the select board that we have had, I would say, an ongoing discussion about this, about this issue. And uh, I, myself, have heard a lot of opposition to the four 10-hour days from other members of the select board. So I don't think uh, Victor should be the Lone Ranger standing up to this. Uh, I have been on the fence for many years about the four 10 hour days. I understand the road crew likes that. And I also understand that they're expecting that for the summer. Um, I think changing it now right before it's supposed to start is maybe not the best thing to do. I don't know about that. Um, but I just think, I mean, I, I have heard over and over again over the years from members of our community saying, how come they only work four days a week in the summer? And you say, well, they work four 10 hour days and they go, huh, well, what happens if there's a washout on a front? You know, what about this? What about that? I mean, the expectation of our community is that the road crew is going to be out there and ready to go. And they're not. And I realize if there was some kind of emergency, they probably could be called in, et cetera. But I, I, I think we need to make up our mind on this for once and for all and not talk about it and then push the buck down the road. But I would not be adverse to saying, you know, we'll do the four tens for this year, but after that, it's over if that's the decision of the select board. I'd like to propose that the ten, the four tens stay through a Memorial Day to Labor Day. I think that makes the most sense, and I think that's what other towns often do. Extending it, I don't remember, but I think it was in my tenure that we extended it past Labor Day. Yeah. But I also think it would be helpful if, if possible, that it's staggered, it right? Staggered. So that it is staggered? Yes, but Eric didn't say that it is. It is staggered, so that there's someone there five days a week. No. 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 Oh, I, no. it's not. So no, a, we, have, we have the ability to adjust if needed if the weather dictates. But if it doesn't dictate, then there's no need to. Mm -hmm. I guess, yes, I, I agree with, I mean, I, I would say that's true. I think that the what what the town perceives is that you know there's a big rainstorm like that that the te the road is graded and then there's a rainstorm the next day and maybe it's because thursday was your last day 
and and so you had to get the grading in, right? And then it's like, why did they grade? The roads are in terrible shape after a rainstorm, that kind of thing. So I would, I would really like, like it to be that things are done not based on the fact that we're only here Monday through Thursday, but that we're being proactive and looking at the weather and saying, guys, it looks like it's gonna rain on Monday, let's take Monday off, right? Or something like that. Yes, Michelle. Michelle Johnson. One thing I want to say is I, I'm in the construction industry, and a lot of our projects, most of them do four 10 hour days in the summer. And one thing you need to remember when you do take out that Friday, you are taking out your breaks, your prep time in the morning, and your end time in the afternoon. So as an employer, as this town, you're actually getting more work hours out of four 10 hour day. That's just a proven fact. But at the end of the day, one thing you need to remember when it comes to your foreman, he is 24 seven. Weekends, nights, vacation, phone calls, all of that. There is no way that he or his crew is gonna allow you to go a day without being there to fix it. Believe me, I've gone with him many a times in my own vehicle while he's cutting trees down so he's not alone. So he's saving the town money in overtime. It's kind of stupid. I'm sure I'll get in trouble for saying that, but it's true. You want safety. He's, never, he's not going to fail you. And I, and I know people think of it as a, as a benefit, but you do, you do have coverage. And you, you have 20 some odd towns in this area. They all do it, but this one. If, if they didn't, they wouldn't, you know? And then I guess I look at the town clerk's office is open four days a week. How come they're not open on Fridays? No, no due respects there. But if, if, you look, if, you, if you look at how your work goes, you're not gonna go without help after, if you have that day off, you're just not. I've done a lot of studies on four 10 hours because of our own company. And it, it's just interesting to see there's pros and cons to it. But, but it, 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 is a great, it is a great benefit to have as an employee to have that extra time. But it's also a good benefit to have a good solid 10 hour day. You know, they're, I mean this week, they, they've been out there working, coming back by 2.30, cutting their day short because you can't, they don't want to get overtime, you know? And I'm all for overtime, but He's all for being economical about the situation. And I just don't know if people step back and look at it, even the town people, you know what I mean? People just don't like it. They want people here five, five days a week, but he is here five days a week. I, yeah, thank you, Michelle. And I, I think that we are, this isn't necessarily, I, we're not criticizing the, the work of, right. of the people and or I don't that think their so. commitment. I, just, I think it's more, um, well, there's the perception. I also personally, you know, like, and maybe I'm just don't know that this is possible. I personally would have a hard time working physically 10 hours a day, four days straight. And so my question is, it, are we really getting 40 hours of work in that 10 hours or, oh, and this is another, this was another problem I had and I don't know, and this is possibly a personnel thing. During the summer, what we saw a lot of, which I think is what we felt was, an, was kind of an abuse of the four hour day, was that people would work eight hours and take two hours of vacation. So that we weren't really getting 10 hours. We weren't getting 40 hours of work. We were getting an abbreviated work week. And, and not, not that it's illegal to take two hours, but maybe that's a policy that we have that you, the minimum vacation you can take is four hours, right? I don't know. I'm just saying that that was troublesome to me. Was um, was seen on people's timesheets a consistent taking of time so that there was not actually 40 hours off in the summer. That's all. Yes, Vic. And and I've had this discussion with with Eric many times. Is that the it's it's unfortunate, but. Uh, Peter mentioned some of it, uh, you know, why aren't you working the townspeople? But the road crew is the most scrutinized people in the whole town. Everybody is watching them. And so when they go by and everything's in the yard at 
4 o'clock in the afternoon or 3.30, they say, well, I thought they were working 10 hours. That's not 10 hours, you know. Uh, so it's a bad perception not to have, uh, you know, people working five days a week. Um, the other thing is, I don't know how you would work it, you know, you're either going to work, if you take a day off, or, or is the whole crew going to take the day off? Well, if it's a grading issue, only one person needs to take the day off. Right. But if, we have, if you're not there, mm -hmm. the grader operator has no supervision. If is you're... Is required? Huh? Is supervision required? I would think so. For a grader so. operator? I don't know. I mean, they know no. what they're doing. If we have a schedule... <coughs> Zara, so I'm not against, in theory, a four-day work week. I would be more comfortable with it if some people took Friday off and some people took Monday off. I'd also be more comfortable with it if we had listed down what what is done all day. Because I feel like we have timesheets that are just, I wrote eight hours, and there's no, like, graded from here to here, or did this to this. Probably right. There's only four of us. Right. So you'd have two people on each day. So you wouldn't have a full crew. So do you or at you least have three people selected your ditching? You could at least have two trucks, could you? Okay. So it's not stacked. So is there just work? one person that could cover the Friday or whatever? If if, and have if you need to grade, yes. Okay. The the thing is, is you don't need to grade every week. If the roads are graded up properly in chloride, they should last a little bit before you need to do them. And then you might not need to do the whole road. You know, you might only need to do the bad section. I mean, if you do it too much, you're wasting chloride and you're also adding unneeded wear and tear on the equipment for no reason. Like if you go cut a road and you only have to cut it once and, it, and it's fine, you probably didn't need to be out there yet. You know, you probably jump on the gun. So I, I don't know enough about how the roads are done and, and what's done when. I mean, I get what I, I get. I assume what you're saying is there's less to do on roads in the in the summertime no, than it, there is in the winter. The weather, yes, really. it's right. right. Unless it's last year, in which case yeah, it's. And, yeah, and, and we were here. Yeah. I, I don't feel educated enough at this point without talking to Eric a little bit more um, to make a decision tonight. Um, but if you want to start with that four day you know, going back to the whatever, whatever. I think, I think, to I think for long. me it comes down to how you manage it, right? Um, Eric and I have had some conversations around this. Um, you know, the, the benefits of 10 hour days really shine. Speaking of the construction companies, you know, the further you drive, you know, the deployment and things like that. We don't really face that here. Um, if I'm sitting in their seat, I absolutely feel like it's a benefit. Um, to have three day weekends um, from a from a resident standpoint and from sitting on the select board I absolutely see the validity of having a conversation about eight hour days um, so I mean depending on which seat we sit in I, I could I could be either side of that conversation I've enjoyed four day work weeks in my work life but you know some of some of that you know, is an hour, hour and a half travel, you know, one way to the job site. Um, it really makes a big difference there. Um, I think this gets highlighted because of some of the uh, things that have happened in the past. And, um, you know, whether it's, oh, they're on four 10 hour days, but somebody's billing overtime because they went in and graded an extra day. They worked all their, all their days that they were scheduled to work because that's their normal work week. But then folks feel like they're being taken advantage of for overtime coming in on a day that they're off. So for me, the efficiencies and, and um, quite honestly, the economics of it, it's a management issue. And if it's not managed properly, then I really do feel like the five, eight hour days is in the town's best interest. If it's managed properly, I don't know as if I would have an issue with four 10 hour days through definitely a shortened period during the summertime. I feel like 
that has been pushed and it's been uh, I'll, I'll stop there that that conversation has been pushed way beyond where I feel like it should even be um, I, I will say I did do a poll through local roads to see what towns were doing just to kind of get an idea and I've got over 20 of them, and I would have to say 85 to 90 percent of them are all from May 1st to November 1st. Wow. And actually, there's two of them, not that I'm saying we need to, but there's two of Ferrisburg and Huntington, they do it year round because it cuts back on their overtime. What's their, what's their hourly schedule? The time are they starting during the day, and what time are they wrapping up? Uh, it did, they did not say. Did you, did you ask that question? I did not ask the question. I just they asked. They probably have more staff. But I would say six to four. Huntington? Probably not. Oh, maybe not. Same. Ferrisburg? I don't know what their population is, but I can't imagine it's much different. Yes, Vic. We, you're, it, it, it's kind of funny that, uh, or it's not funny, <clears throat> but we're basing this all on grading the roads. And you're always telling me, and, and I agree with you, there's always something to do. Well, there's more other things than just grading the roads that need to be getting done. I understand. Mm -hmm. But the, the con, the, 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 what was brought up was, why aren't we not grading a road on Friday because it's a nice day? It's a good right. grading day. That was, that was, so I'm just going back to that. Right. Well, you know, I mean, I can give you some more, but if... I'm just, just yeah. that's what I'm just, that's yeah. why I was saying grading. So I would make a motion, so we can move on, that we, for this year, accept a 10-hour work week starting June 1st through September 30th. Second that. Is there any discussion? Could we go to change that to... Uh... September 1st. Vic would like to amend it to September 1st. When's the holiday? Uh, like, or whatever, after Labor Day. Labor Day. Is, that the, is that the beginning of the month? That's what I'm trying to look up. Uh, Labor Day? Labor Day is yes. the second. Yeah. September 2nd? Yeah. So starting that week, September 2nd. So the first day is a holiday, an eight hour day holiday. So September 3rd? Yeah, really, September 2nd, because you can count it as a work, or whatever, yeah. September 1st, if it starts on Sunday. Any discussion on that? I would second schedule. Peter. I would, I, would, I would second that motion, but with one, uh, with one possible change. Thinking of administration, what we really ought to do is line up the period with pay periods. So rather than have it be the first of the month, have it be the first day of the next pay period or whatever, so that we know, you know, this pay period it's eight hour days, this pay period it's it's uh, ten hour days. Otherwise, it causes a lot of confusion, I believe, or potentially could cause a lot of confusion. Oh, right. of confusion. It is, yeah. It's still forty hours, Peter. I, I think setting the date is more definitive. you right. and, and not trying to figure out when payroll hits. It's the, at the end of the day, the hours are the hours, whether it's 48, you know, uh, four 10 hour days or five eight hour days, theoretically the hours are the same. My, or this Saturday starts in the Victor anyway. So okay. I, would, I would second Victor's motion, um, approving the four 10 hour days starting June 1st to September 1st. Okay. September 2nd. September 2nd, yeah, whatever. whatever. Okay, is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of it beginning, what is what is the day? Is it really June 1st or is it like? Um, yeah. The first is a Monday, right? I would say. No, no the third's a Monday. The third's a Monday, so I mean the payroll goes, does it start on a Sunday anyway? It starts on a Saturday. Saturday? Saturday. Yeah, the first of June. So that works. So just, Yep, June 3rd through <coughs> June 1st. Well, the payroll starts on June on Okay, June 1st through September 1st. Se yes. September 1st. September 1st through September August 31st. 31st. Yeah, August 31st. Yep. Through August 31st. Yep, that's the Saturday. Okay, so June 1st to August 31st. Yep. That's the motion? That's the yep. motion. That's the motion. 
Uh, you made the motion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. So Any? Rick made the motion. Randy seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Said aye. motion. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Vic says aye. Everybody aye. All righty. No, Peter. No, Peter did too. Peter raised his hand. Okay. I raised my hand. Aye. Okay. Well, there you go, boys. Um, okay, Zara, can you update us on? Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, and well, maybe be, while he leaves, I'm a little concerned about the um, how the road crew is feeling. So that's <laughs> part of what we would like in the committee um, to not only boost the road crew, but obviously um, the people that live and work in Middlesex, that they feel good about what the road crew is doing. So we've had three meetings. Our fourth one is this Thursday. Um, the last meeting we broke out into four groups because with 18 people, it's just it's too much going on. So we have four teams. Um, the first team is Team Fix. And I actually have a list from Team Fix um, of some mud areas that could possibly be taken care of by the road crew with our new excavator while Dirt Tech does their work. So if you're going to shut me down, shut me down, Randy, because <laughs> we don't need to talk about this forever if it's not going to pass through. <laughs> All right, so Team Fix is looking at the current things that we need to do with the roads. Um, we also have funding, team funding. So they're looking at grants. Liz and I um, and Eric had a meeting with Keith from the Vermont Central Vermont Central Commission. Yeah. Um, and Eric and I um, started. We did two of those grants today. Right. And we have a list, and we now know the questions so that we can go around. And once we figure out the list of, of who we're going to, what money we're going to ask for, then I will fill out those preliminary grant requests, and those will get started. Um, we also have Team Friends, which, again, is going to hopefully help both the road crew and is that team friends? Friends. Ah. <laughs> friends. <laughs> to um, just try to create a little bit of positivity. Obviously, right now, um, you know, sometimes in Front Porch Forum, we have people saying, hey, crew's doing a great job. I, you know, I asked for that, and I'm getting crickets. So we want to change that. We want to show them that we are, are doing things. And hopefully, my next report on Front Porch Forum will answer a bunch of questions great. that people have been asking, obviously have been taking notes with everything that we've been discussing. So I'm just going to kind of continue to let people know what I know. That's the best I can do. And then we also have Team Future. Uh, Team Future is a little bit more esoteric at, the, at this point. Um, Ken Davis sends me lots of great questions and lots of answers, and he's ready to go. Um, so we're going to have a little extra meeting to, on Thursday night to try to shore that up and have a little bit more focus there. The other three teams seem like they, they know what they're doing. Have so is direction. Team Friends almost like team communication too? It is. It is. So it's, it's Hilton <laughs> with his surveys, it's me with Front Porch Forum, and gotcha. then also what other, what other ways that we can get the community involved, hear from them, speak to them, okay. make them happy. So, yeah, that hazard uh, mitigation funding opportunity requires us to have our hazard mitigation plan, at least in the, like, that we'll communicate that we're working with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission on our updated plan. Um, and it's millions of dollars um, that potentially we could be applying for with a 25% uh, match, which can be in kind. I think all of it can be in kind. Um, and it's for things specific to um, like flood flood mitigation, so it can be um, upsizing a bridge, um, uh, working on the places where you know the river's falling in from the road. Um, what were some of the other slope stabilization? Yeah, slope stabilization. Yeah, um, you know potentially doing some work on the road so that like it's not draining into that person's house. Yeah. Um, what was the other big one? Um, for the... For that grant. For the buyouts. Buyouts, yeah, but we, I don't yeah. think we do that. No. But the buyouts were more like not the buyouts 
uh, Sarah of the people's homes, but more like someone might have some land that you could buy out and turn into a floodplain. So that no one could ever develop it. Yeah, so that no one could develop it. Yeah, there so, were a lot. I mean, there, there are a ton of, ton of different things. Natural resource projects, infrastructure projects, flood proofing or, of municipal and commercial buildings, road relocation, elevation, and, or soil, soil stabilization. Yeah. And we do have until June 21st, but Eric and I are going to get started on it and try to get as many done in May, and then whatever comes up in June will be... A, and they were like, shoot for the moon, put in every project you want, and we'll see what we can find. <laughs> yes, Randy. Two, two things. Uh, the whole floodplain conversation, the buyout thing, uh, is that just purchasing development rights, or is it, is it actually purchasing land and the town would own? It says buyouts. I think it's the land the town is. Yes, sir. So all those buyouts that we did, those are all hazard mitigation grants. Right. Every single one. So this right. one, this he said, would be funding. above and beyond, right? You, because you would ask yeah. that. To, yeah. yeah, this is different. I mean, okay. it's 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 the same but different. It's the same but different. Yeah. Yes. So this is like it's not around these people, the, the the people that are in here. This is more like, I think it could be someone who potentially didn't get into the buyout in the first place with their or an home, abandoned but building. Yeah, I like think it's being... more like like somebody has a lot of land and part of it floods and you know they might want to get rid of it and they could be included in a buyout. But I don't think we want to put our money there. I think we want to put our money toward the roads and... Yeah, we'd get more bang for our money. Yeah, I think we'd get more. Yes, Vic. So, um, two things. Yes. One thing is, I thought we were going to talk about the, uh, the McCullough Hill Great... Yes. Yep, we did that, and we also didn't mention um, Eric's going to go back to the permit yeah, guy. Yeah, I've already called him, left him a message. You guys are team do it. Yeah. You go next, what, the, the permit does not... Uh, Stream alteration permit. Uh, yeah. The one where you can't get the 200 feet either way. Right. Yeah, he's got you digging on one side, but not on the other, and we need... There is a call to, to Jared, and I'm waiting to hear. Is he still? Yes, he is. Yes, that was a false statement. Correct. Okay. That is incorrect. The other thing is, is uh, what, you know, when you, what makes me uh, kind of pick my ears up, if you will, is when you said uh, you could buy out. Why don't we go buy that land up there so we don't have to put two culverts in on uh, Lower Sunny Brook? I mean, that would save us thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. But what you what have. How would people? You, you describe where that land is. So. On Lower Sunnybrook, yeah. uh, we have the twin culverts that we replaced during the flood. Yeah. Those are required to have box culverts. In order to put those in, we're going to have to raise the road considerably. One of the thought processes is if we could purchase the land that is there on that side of the road, we could straighten the brook out and not have it cross the road and we would be eliminating was but it, are you allowed to wasn't touch that streets? property uh, listed as trying to go You're through to straight, straight. Uh, the buyout with FEMA? I don't know if the middle pieces are. I don't know that. The, the hurdle we mm -hmm. would have is is getting the stream alterations yeah. people to allow us to straighten mm -hmm. the book. Yeah. yeah. We may have to just put a little curve in it, a couple of curves in it. And then we can yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Whatever I don't takes. know if they're going to allow us to move so it. So that would but be, that would be ideal. That funding. Who owns it? One, Someone? One person is... Uh, I think there's the, two people that own the property the, there. The, the, uh, what's the guy who owns all the 1,800 acres? Nell Howell Trust? Yes. Yes. Yeah. They own a portion of that. Okay. Um, all righty. Before you go on, if yep. there's something... Well, we got... Um, but I don't want Eric to get out of here and get to close this out without looking at the uh, permit, the access permit. Oh, right. Yep. Okay. And then there's also the fire station. Which are you going to say for that, Eric? Yes. Okay. So let's just go over the Kevin and Kaylee McClory, 38 State Farm Road, Apartment 1, Waterbury, Vermont. That's where they're from, but they're doing something on the right side of South, South Bears Farm. South Bears Farm, yes. They're yep. putting in a driveway out there. Okay. Past, uh, Where's Daniel's Old farm? Bulldog Farm? It's so Daniel's Farm. What? It's Daniel's Farm. Daniel's Farm. Should I change that? To, it used to be Old, old Bulldog Farm. I'll just Daniel's write Daniel's farm. farm. It's Daniel's Farm. Yep. 
One, before we get too far down, one of the things I mentioned to Sarah earlier is it would be helpful to include like distance to nearest neighbor. Like you can gauge, like reading this yeah. for somebody who doesn't know, yeah. like, oh, this is Mary Jane's house. You know, it's right next to that. But if, if you're able to say it's 500 feet from this address or whatever, you can kind of tell where it is, which side of the road it's on, the whole nine yards. So I can tell you exactly where it is. <laughs> oh, is it? Is that why you're here, Beth? That's fine. Okay. Would you like to speak, Beth? Uh, if there was, I wait and wait and I don't okay. know what your normal process is. Um, um, well, we're just discussing it, and normally these things are just cookie cutter, and we say, okay, we'll prove it, unless someone would like to talk about it. Okay, so, um, yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Beth Holtzman, and um, this, um, the proposed change to the driveway um, is uh, right across from the edge of our property boundary. It's moving, I don't know, about a distance, but it, the driveway was sort of across from the beginning of our driveway, and now it's right across from where our garage and house are. <coughs> and so I want to just preface my remarks by saying that um, I do not have an objection to the location of the driveway, and I do not want to slow down um, Kevin and Casey's project, but I do have really serious concerns about stormwater flow and the location of the driveway, because the driveway, where it would come down, is right across front, like if things went across the road, they would come down and they would be in our garage, the water would be down in our garage and in our house. And our house is built into the hill, so our house, we have our bedrooms are on in the basement on the bottom floor. So I know that when our house was built in 1978, that first year something happened, came across the road, and there was in fact a flood in the basement of our house. So, um, I know, Eric, you're coming tomorrow to talk to Paul and Michael, mm -hmm. and I'm really hopeful that we'll have a good solution to mm -hmm. the culverts and the drainage, how it all, um, but I just feel like this needs to be thought of for the future, what storms are like in the future, mm -hmm. and how oh. water's coming down off of above, mm -hmm. from down the road, and also as development happens and there's clearing, water moves more quickly, it doesn't get absorbed as much, it comes down more quickly and more ends up in the roads. So, um, and just driving here, I didn't see very many places in Middlesex where there is a driveway that is directly across from like a downhill house. Um, they're across from other driveways, but like where the house is within just a few hundred yards, like feet really of where the water could potentially flow. Um, so so on this picture, where is Beth's house? Oh, the house is here. The house is right here. Okay. Gotcha. So, so just to reiterate, it's not about the driveway, it's not about the development, it's about investing in yep. the right ditching, culverts, storm water, all around, and how that culvert that goes under their driveway is constructed that if another bad storm happens, or when another bad storm happens, that it doesn't end up. Um, and it just felt like this is the time for me to come express that concern. Yeah, um, for sure. But I'm not trying to block anything. Gotcha. Thanks, Beth. Um, so yeah, we wouldn't, yes. we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't uh, move on this until Eric has got this so, or no? I mean, we can certainly go and look at it if you want, and, and you can show me what exactly your concerns are of the location. Yeah, I mean, I know you're coming tomorrow, and yep. Paul and yep. Paul and other neighbors, my, my husband is Paul, are going to meet with you tomorrow, yep. and I'm very hopeful that a great solution, where, you know, that we'll have confidence mm -hmm. that the solution is a good one. I just wanted to say it needs to be, like, forward-thinking, not how we used to do things, mm -hmm. not how mm -hmm. we, yeah. Can so I, does it make sense to hold off on this until Eric gets to weigh in? Uh, state standards, the way they are designed, is supposed to, uh, the entrance is supposed to be kicked back and sloped away from the road. 
and then go up so that any road water coming out of the driveway or around the driveway goes into the ditch before it goes to the road. Uh, and if I'm thinking of the location, I know I looked at it, but it's been a couple of weeks. I don't believe it's very steep where their driveway is going to be, or am I mistaken in that, that assumption? Okay, very. <laughs> no, but I, mean, I, I, I can't. I can't in my mind picture whether there is room before it goes right. up the hill for it. That um, I'm. I can't tell from the drawing. Right. I have to go back out and look. Either. I I, I, yeah, I really am not trying to delay their project. I really don't. I don't want to delay their project. I just want it to be. But what I, I guess my question is: when we approve driveway permits, what's the minimum? work we're doing this that's, culvert that's this here. yeah so the first the, culvert. The only thing we're concerned with is that what's in our right of way right so it'd be the work that's done on the culvert and that it's up to state standards right but in terms of the rest of the work that's them and they're so, no, so what i'm talking about is it's there's the rest there's them yes. but there's also everything else right. that's happening on the road yeah so there's a lot of water that currently is coming down that ditch and is going to have to go through their culvert mm -hmm. or we're going to have to divert water before it either way it's coming on my land mm -hmm. um, it's either coming above my house through an existing ditch where a culvert is no longer working where it used to go or it's going down further where it fans out mm -hmm. into the field mm -hmm. and so i acknowledge like the water's going to come somehow from the top of the road to onto my land I just don't want it coming into my house. Yeah, right. You don't want it. Don't blame you. <laughs> so, so, um, so or I'm talking. Of, so I'm coming to express concern about the overall plan, and I know Eric is coming to talk. And the, I'm, I don't know if any of you drove on South Bear Swamp Road this winter. I, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. Like you had to come multiple times to put. Mm -hmm. It was impassable between our house and the mm -hmm. Because well, of mud. Because of mud. Okay. I would I would suggest we hold off on that until Eric gets to go. Sarah, why do you? Well, I'm just, I'm just I'm just I'm thinking of the purpose of the access permit. So the access permit, Eric, as long as the applicant has uh, as long as the applicant is following the state the BTRAN standards, right? Yep. I can't see any legal reason that you would have to object to that. Correct. Well, that's that's a minimum standard, though. It's not like if he sees additional cause to impose you know bigger culverts or anything like that to maintain you know water flow mm -hmm. that's an issue which you would be able to hold I just up don't want this to in legal trouble i don't want these homeowners to come and sue the town it's a, it's a cause for a lawsuit yeah. it's why would the, why would the why would they come to the town again please well, I mean, I'm, I'm just working through what I know a little bit of access permits and what the town can and cannot do. So, the, so the, you've got a private property, you've got the town's right of way, you've got the town's road. And that's really, well, the select board's only interest is the town's right of way in that road. That's it. So if the, if the caught, I mean, you may be perfectly within your right, you may say, this, where this driveway is, the water's going to come and erode down the road or without proper ditching. I mean, that's up to, that's, that's for, just in normal, that's just common sense for the road, for the town to be concerned about. Right. But um, if you deny a homeowner like by two weeks, that means that they can't do a curb cut for two weeks in the construction season. Just, I just We're want not, you guys to be aware, aware of that. Yeah, I don't think that the request to push off until Eric gets to see it, it gives okay. him a chance. I'm, just, I'm doing, I'm trying to a chance to evaluate the size of culvert at the end of the road that's necessary to just say meet the minimum standard that may be okay in most cases but if there's concern we should evaluate it okay. and and make sure that it's it's got adequate volume to handle the amount of water that we've been seeing lately and into the future i also i also think if you look at their drawing, they specify what they're doing for ditching too in their drive. They do. Just, this just, is a just thirty just foot, clear. fifteen inch culvert. How big is that? Fifteen inch. Fifteen inch. That's fifteen inch. Standard. Standard. Not a bigger than that, but yeah. But maybe it may be. Like I have a bigger culvert than that right. in my driveway. It may be that if you take a look at it. I mean, I, 
No, I mean, you can look at it. I mean, uh, it may well be that before they can do anything, the road, the, the ditch in the right of way may have to be ditched. Oh, it has to be. So and are you going to. I think they stated that too. Okay, so are they going to do that or right are we going to do that? Right here, it says. Who pays for the culvert? They do. They do. The one right in the drive, and, right next to the road. And then Beth has said there's another culvert up there that doesn't work. Is that yeah, a culvert that we have to replace? Or are they going to replace it? No, so the culvert that isn't working is um, a little bit further up from where they're proposing their driveway. It goes under the road. Right. Now, it's so a town culvert. It's a town right. culvert. And it's I a believe, town cul culvert. I believe that's scheduled to be replaced. So, so um, right now, in the current, right now, it is not catching any water and preventing it from coming down on that side. So if that were to change by the time that they do their culvert, and it's all like, it's like instead of looking piece by piece, looking at the whole. Is, uh, but uh, like I just want to say again, I am not asking for this to be delayed. I don't have a problem with that. I'm, it's the stuff that's all around it that is, the, is my concern. But can I just say, if we approve this culvert, I mean, if we approve this this thing, um, this driveway request, we have no no chance to. Like, can can we say we'll approve it with a bigger culvert or something like that, or is this like set in stone that it's? You could put down 18 inch culvert. But if you want to do that right now. I mean, to me, the 15 inch doesn't sound right if it's really a steep driveway. That just doesn't. So I mean, can we do this? At it, you really yeah, can't we don't know. Can right. we just can we approve it conditionally with uh, input from Eric after his site visit to include the culvert size? So the the permit itself is approved, and Eric will weigh in on what the size of the culvert is after his site visit, and that's the only piece that's that really that can. needs to be defined. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Can the town legally put increased requirements from what the state minimum is? We can. It's absolutely. Okay. Yeah. It says it right on the permit. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so then someone can make a motion that we're going to approve this permit um, pending uh, Eric's review of the area and his final assessment of the size of um, the culvert. Um, but I see Michael's hand up first. Michael on the iPad. Michael yeah, Michael Levine, is that you? Yes, it is indeed. Um, I, this this isn't about what you're about to vote on specifically, but I think it's more just reinforcing part of what Beth is saying is um, this idea of more and more driveways getting put in. And, you know, as Eric said, we're just looking at the part that interfaces our road system or our right of way. But with the effects of increased rainfall and climate change, and I don't know what group in town would even start to look at this. Maybe it's just the roads committee for starters. But how do you assess the volume and the runoff and the steepness because I don't think we have any requirement about steepness of drives, driveways just where they actually intersect with the road. So looking ahead and trying to be more proactive, can the town start assessing what is a reasonable driveway and you know what just falls outside the boundaries? Yes, sir. I mean, so we, ha we do have driveway access permit. Um, it's from 2014 on a PDF. Um, MiddlesexVermont.org. So that's right on our website that lists what we. No, but he's looking. saying. I think he's saying that as a as a town, do we want to start thinking about all the future driveways? Because this isn't going to be the last driveway, right? And do we want to consider? And I don't know how it works on a state. You know what? If there's a state mandate of like that we have to follow and that trumps everything, 
or can the town in their zoning regs come up with some sort of driveway, um, sort of minimums or something? Wouldn't it? Would not? Wouldn't it be like trying to mandate what happened that last July 11th? We don't know. Right. I mean, we should have our culverts clean. I I think we should have that culvert. Mm -hmm. If it's really that bad, I, I think we should have that culvert that dumps out on Beth's land mm -hmm. to either replaced or cleaned. And I think we should. A lot of our trouble last year got it that we got in too was that our culverts were too small mm -hmm. and they were not cleaned out, so the water went yeah. where it wanted to go over the driveways, across the road, and everything. So I think, you know, I think Michael's got a legitimate point. I think you have a real good point. Yeah. Paul Sermonera. Yeah, guys, if, if, if and I, I'm with Mary Beth, that if, I'm not looking to, to delay anything. The problem is you guys now have uh, the unique position of being aware of a problem that, that has happened as a direct result of, of this culvert. So like this acknowledgement is is brought out to light um and to answer the question of culvert sizing is based on on basically square acre square footage square yardage of collective water area that's draining into this culvert now that's all based off of you know natural forest or or um, a cleared property so whatever is based right now on that culvert is is being based on virgin woods virgin land when you go and put a, a house site there you completely change the dynamics of that thus increasing more water um uh, uh, you know as sandy mentioned you know that the things are headed you know down there that that weren't originally there um so i would just caution you guys more more from a like a cautionary standpoint that this one may be may be worth um asking to get uh, even from jaron or something like that, just to get uh, an idea of what kind of capacity of acreage is coming down there to size the culvert appropriately. Because once you guys approve this, even if Eric goes out there and says, no, this would be fine if it's not, unfortunately now you guys are aware of a problem that exists. Um, and if it happens again, I fear that may come back a little bit on the town. We'll end up having to pay for a new culvert. Right. Or potentially damaged house, damage to the house because yeah. you guys approved uh, a culvert that that thus caused an, that an, caused an issue. So I think that there they are um, the second little drawing. I think shows that they are planning to maintain a slope uphill that will take water down below where our house and our driveway is. Um, I think they have thought about like other runoff coming in a different way. It's just, you yeah, know, it's just, like, it's a water yeah, drain off. So, and, and the only other thing I would like to yeah. just say yeah. is, oh, there's my husband, yeah. I guess, maybe. Oh, no, there's Paul Sherman now. So the other thing is just like, I just found out about this a couple of hours ago, and, um, and I, my preference would have been to be able to have this conversation with our future neighbor and, um, and maybe Eric and not be coming in front of you with the concern at this point to have, have had it worked out. But I don't know what the notification is for neighbor, like just like I've, like what you do to let people know that there's going to be like, um, this is like, there's no zoning permit. There's no like nothing that would have alerted me except for my neighbor that this was come who read the agenda. I yeah, think. Sarah. So Beth, when, what, so this is a chicken and egg situation, right? In order, normally what happens is that people file a zoning permit and they file an access permit, but they can't start anything until they get the access permit. Everything stops, right? Nothing right. can happen. And with the town's role here, there is, as you can see, final final side requirements. That goes into the that list all the things that you're concerned about. Culvert size, runoff, everything that's on the permit. The idea of a, of a drive access permit is really sight lines. You know, can I see, if somebody pulls out a driveway, can they right. see what's going on? That's really the town's, that's part of the town's interest, and that's why it goes for the court. But then, when those people apply for a zoning permit, they're going to have to put a big Z on their property in the right of way, and you can come and look at the application, or go online, call Kevin, whatever, and you have 15 days to complain or protest or anything like that. Right. Okay. 
like I'm you just, will know about it. I will. I know. But, but I understand. I understand. I just would, you know, I I'm just saying I would have preferred not to be doing what I'm doing if I had gotten notification earlier. Um, or, you know, we might have had different timing. With figured out that Eric could have come two days ago, and then maybe I wouldn't be here. Do you guys want to pass this over until June until June seventh, June fourth, your next meeting? I wouldn't mind approving contingent on the culvert sizing. I, I think so too. I mean, because I it's like Beth said, and I, that our goal isn't here to stop this process, but it is to make sure that this one culvert. You do see the final site requirements at the bottom of the permit, right? Right here. Yeah. This here. No, no. The second page of the application. Second page. At the bottom. 30, oh. 30 feet more. oh, right. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, minimum. Shall explain if larger culvert is necessary. Okay, yep. Oh, okay. It so, says that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does, does that other driveway belong to them, too? Okay. So, does someone want to make that motion that the I. Existing driveway on that side? Had created. So yeah, so so there's an existing driveway here that just goes up a little bit. Um, it's just like a there's a culvert under the road, under the driveway there. Um, is that the same property? It's the same property. Is there a house there? And there's no house. It's is that just where that, you ski? That, they, I think yeah, I think they thought that they were gonna use that as the driveway, and I think that this is a less aggressive, less steep mm -hmm. um, driveway. It's just that it it's right across from our house, whereas the other one was like across from our field. And then I wouldn't be here because I wouldn't be worried about the basement. Floodplain. You would have a floodplain. It would be come, yeah. <laughs> Which is how you know driving here tonight. I was like, yeah. is anybody right across? No. So. Yeah. So. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Beth, for coming in. Um, so is there a motion that we approve this um, with uh, road foreman um, recommending a larger culvert if necessary at his site visit? Is there a motion for that? I would make the motion that uh, we would approve it with uh, final say to Eric, our road foreman, and not just not just hold him to the culvert size. I agree with that. Okay, well he's already signed it. Yep. Well, he has to come back. Yeah. Say that again, sir. Is it he has to, he, there's a, it's an ongoing process. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's that's not final signature. That's oh, there's signature. the final signature. Okay, yep. That doesn't get signed until. All time. right. So, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Randy seconds it. All those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. The ayes have it. All right. Now we are an hour behind. Thank you very plus much. Plus five minutes. Thanks, Beth, for our fire department update. Okay. Wait. So, you got one more. Oh God! Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Tom Hickory. Yeah, no one's, no one's contesting that. Tom Hickory. No one's what? Tom Vickery. Yeah, no one's contesting that. I, I, I motion that we pass Tom Vickery's driveway access permit. <laughs> Center Road, Lot One. That's there's no picture with this. Is that the one that's in there now? No, it's up above. It's halfway between that and the other driveway. Okay. It's marked, it's marked with a ribbon and a stake. There's it? nothing attached to his. Just above knocking on the right side. There wasn't much of that. Is that a violation? Uh, it's the same person doing it, but it's a different location. So here's where I said it. All right, is. Um, and, and you said there's been zero uh, questions or concerns by anybody that you that I've been aware of. Yeah. Okay. Of course, I didn't know about that one either, so. All right. <laughs> is there a second? I'll second that. All right. I'll second it. Okay, Vic seconded it. All those in favor of passing the highway permit for Mr. Tom Vickery, say aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations, homeowners. All righty. Thank you for your patience. That's what we're here for. Uh, okay, so total, we're up to 38 calls so far. We had seven for the last period. We had no mutual aid out. We had one mutual aid in, but that was an automatic. We didn't request it. Um, one of the calls was called in as a field fire approaching the woods, a large field fire approaching the woods. 
and uh, it was a permitted burn. Montpelier got there first, and uh, I called in that it was a permitted burn. They turned around and went back home. Uh, and so, yes, it was mutual aid, but it wasn't. Um, Did you have to put it out? No. It was, it was a six to eight foot um, brush fire with the guy, the person, the homeowner was up there burning. There was no danger of it. Oh, I thought it was his brush It was somebody who went. was up on. Uh, yeah, happens all the time, I'm sure. Oh, wow. Way across from East Hill, up on a hill, and just called from their front porch and didn't. Actually, investigate. Oh, so there's no so actual grass fire. So the West reason resources. the reason that Capital West called it is because the call came in as a large field fire approaching the woods, so they weren't going to send just one department. <clears throat> so, um, second call. Oh, as far as the, the stats go, um, max numbers this time was eight, uh, min number was two, but our average is bumped up to five. We we're four and three quarters last month. Uh, engine great. one was out five times. Engine six was almost out one time, but because of that fresh fire it was permitted, we didn't go out. Tanker one was out once. Rescue one was out uh, once. Truck 14 zero POV was two times. So we had Portal Road one, which I just talked about. Bulldog had a um, carbon monoxide check requested by Montpelier Ambulance when they responded to a, a EMS call, and nothing was detected. North Bear Swamp had a carbon monoxide detector false alarm. Um, Simplicity Acres, same day, carbon monoxide false alarm. Um, normally, carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors have battery issues in the fall between one and two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. For some, some reason, we had two of them the same day starting in the spring when we had warm weather. Wow. Uh, weird. That is weird. <clears throat> Supply chain issues or global warming, I don't know. Um, okay, then we go to I-89 southbound. Greyhound bus in the median. That was a bit of a pucker factor. Um, it ended up being the bus just went into the median, stayed upright. <laughs> Nobody on the bus complained of any medical uh, issues. Um, we got them off, got them away from the bus once the tow truck showed up. Kept them safe from traffic. We did have to end up closing down southbound because the tow truck had to get use up both lanes to get the Greyhound out and upright. Once we got it into the high speed lane, the driver ran through all the checks, made everything was okay to drive it, and we got the people back on the bus. Then I opened up the interstate. State police wanted to open it up with people walking down the road, and I said no. Nope. And when, fi when fire gets on the scene, fire has the responsibility of whether clo lane gets closed or the whole road gets down. That's on our back. So if we say, oh yeah, traffic can go, and somebody gets whacked, guess what? It's on us. Yeah. So, Good call. So we don't like to have that happening. Nope. Uh, then we had a tractor trailer brake fire, which was out by the time we got the engine up there. and worked on some of the brake stuff, or they did? They did, yeah, it was an airline that came up. And uh, so that, um, we had lots of responders for that one. And then we had a car versus deer. Um, it is springtime, so be aware. As far as fast squad, there's a total of 17 this month. Uh, 14 were medical only calls. For our training, we did air pack training to re-familiarize people. It's an annual thing we do. Uh, as far as repairs, rescue one is fixed. It did have to get a new oil pump and a six inch vacuum line that goes on a butterfly valve that, that uh, releases the pressure in the turbo. Uh, but now it's running fine. Um, as far as purchases, so we finally got some estimates in on bunker gear. So turnout gear, the stuff we put on um, when we go to a fire. Um, we've gotten quotes from uh, local here uh, Reynolds and we got um, Bergeron over in New Hampshire. We're looking at those quotes. Uh, the max is uh, 45,100. Um, we talked about this in the combining and the ARPA money. Um, we got it now that we have the quotes and we want to, Eric and I need to sit down and go over those quotes and pick out um, what we're getting, what we want to get. But that's um, we were told that this is a, a non-budget thing. It's coming out of the ARPA funds to pay for the 
This, we also, most of our gear is over 10 years old. They're changing the, um, the uh, NFPA suggested requirements that um, you have to change your gear every 10 years, all towns. Wow. And since we are now town fire department, guess what? We so, have to change your gear. Right, so I'm coming to you and letting you know the worst case scenario cost, but this is something I've been warning you about. What's this the worst is, case scenario cost, say again? 45,100. For the outfits? 45, for the pants and coats. The boots and, and we helmets. And talked about that, it's using the yeah. ARPA money. You did. Yeah. You've done it. Yep. Yeah. We did? Okay, that's I fine. I, I just don't remember. 50,000. Yeah, I thought that was for something else, but Air that we paid for. Airpacks. 70,000 for Airpacks. 70, for Air 70, 70, 70. 70. Yep. Yep. And I thought there was a third thing that we did for the fire department. No? Yes, Vic. <laughs> oh, I was just curious about the, you said you, uniforms. And, then, and there's a big article out now that it has the material on there is cancer causing, or no? Can you tell us what we don't so want? So the, or what we do want? The cancer causing is the not the not the the gear itself. It's when you go into a fire, especially with all the plastics and stuff in the house, gets on your gear, and and um, the arsenic that's in that gets released from some of the chemi chemical produced items mm -hmm. and you can go back and if you don't clean the that gear then you constantly breathe that stuff in Over that time. Can cause cancer mm -hmm. we currently have a standard washer and dryer the standard household washer and dryer. the proper system that we should have um, we can use another department uh, Waitsfield um, has said once I get theirs fixed, we could use theirs if we wanted to. It's called an extractor. Um, those are around ten thousand dollars. I'm not ready to to start saying we need to have that. Yeah. We can do. We can separate the gear, the liners, and the exterior. Wash them in our stuff right now. But that's it's not the clothing material that causes cancer. It's the stuff from inside the building that causes the cancer. Okay. That's terrible. Prolonged exposure. Uh, and it's not just prolonged on one no. event, it's, no, it's yes. multiple events. Yes. <coughs> Any other Cumulative. questions? Uh, and uh, from a text I got today, we have somebody who's um, wanting to join the fire department is coming to the meeting tonight. Well, good. Yes. What time does your meeting start? Seven. In 20 minutes. Okay, then we need to get you guys going on that. Um, oh, I will do. Um, a little update. Cheryl, thank you for doing that, getting that information. Um, the guy from the energy audit came back with needing a little bit more information about the electricity use, and Cheryl was great and pulled that together. Did he respond or say, he didn't say anything, okay. Um, I asked him, you know, if there's more you need, let us know as ASAP. So I think they're in the process. So I ran, I talked, this is sort of jumping into other correspondence, but I did talk with Sam Lash. Um, and they were, this was at our last meeting, I think, when she was here, or she wasn't here, but maybe three weeks ago or something, I saw her. And she thought it was going to be at least another month to two months before we were going to get our assessments in, our energy assessments in. And that um, the grant application for MERP would be due like November 1st. Um, and so we're, you know, I think we were hoping by July we'd get these assessments in, which doesn't give us much time to write the grant. Um, and they know that it's a problem, but it's just how it is, unfortunately. It just has to do with the scheduling of the money, because um, I think it's ARPA money, some of that more money. So anyway, obviously, we're still waiting for that, but hopefully what Cheryl did, which is giving more information, will button that up and they can get that to us. Um, okay, any other questions for the fire department? Thank you guys for your service as usual. Any car fires? Electric car fires? <laughs> Not yet. Good. There, there is a thing on YouTube apparently for uh, rechargeable um, tools. Yes. 34, a 30th floor fire set off by those tools. 
and you no got to get good so brands. You can't get the cheapo brands. Fire bad batteries are all in hose on their backs, up thirty volts. Wow. Oh. Just beware. Yeah, like keep your batteries. Yeah, you guys, be careful with all. Everything's going electric, so be careful with your batteries. I'll leave them charging and leave for vacation. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, update. Re okay, no, that's what we talked about. We've already talked about that. Oh, well, this is. That's. Well, no, this is different. This is the hazardous mitigation oh, funding opportunity yeah, yeah. is what she talked about. Right. This yeah, is sorry. just the contract that I need to sign for. Right. Or the, else they can send you a sign with the contractor first. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'll just sign it tonight. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so this is for the engineering piece of the grant for the grant that I just signed earlier this week, which was like 400000 right. to go toward the emergency watershed. Work. The, the emergency watershed work and um, Adrian Megidas, you know, those houses that mm -hmm. need riparian work and things like that. Okay, so so that's moving along. Um, the um, Okay, so now we're into other business. Welch Park update, how's that going? <laughs> I have news. Oh, Sarah has news. I talked to Rob Halbert today and um, he recommends uh, doing, there are two, two issues. One is the issue on the fire pond. Who owns the fire pond that needs to be investigated and that those breaks secure that the fire department can always secure those to get into that fire pond. And the second thing is he would like his own paralegal to do a deep research. And I, being diplomatic, I think that's what I said. I do too. Did you hear that, Peter? No, I couldn't hear her. I'm okay. sorry. She said that um, Rob Halpert suggested, recommended that we find out um, Clear, uh, clear understanding of the fire department's right to use the the water pond. Yep. And I'm on that. okay, good. And um, that he hires his paralegal to do a full um, title search of the property. No, I don't believe that's correct. He's looking for guidance from us whether we want him to do that or not. That's going to be that's going to be expensive. Um, when I talked to him this morning on the phone, he was recommending that we not do that. Oh, okay. Well, Sarah, what did he uh, say to you? Uh, uh, he said to me, yes. I, it's a That's tricky a situation that I don't really want to mention in a public meeting. Okay. Sarah recommends that we do a I full title Rob search. Rob called me and said I recommend that. Okay. Day. Rob called Sarah to say he recommends that we actually do a full title search. So I would... Well, that's a good did he give you an estimate of what the cost was? He didn't give me an estimate, but I can get an estimate tomorrow. Well, it's just Karen Green. So, that, so here's, here's the question, and I did have this conversation with him this morning. We, meaning Welch Park, hired this attorney up in Stowe to do these documents, and he has done that work. So the question is, do we need to do it all over again and potentially incur? His bill was, I think, $2,500, wasn't it? The gentleman who prepared the documents? I believe it was. Anyway, it's just a question of whether it's, whether it's a duplicate effort or not, or whether we're comfortable relying on this attorney up in Stowe or whether we want to have our own attorney do it. If we want to be super careful, we should have our attorney do it. But is it really necessary? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, we have those those deeds and all that stuff have been peered over and poured over. I don't know how many times over the years. So I I don't know. I would I would certainly like to have another conversation with him before we approve that because that's that's different from what he said to me this morning. Sarah, do you have any comments? Come, join us in front of the owl. Um, so and that's Rob's we issue. think that's not my issue. Yeah, we Rob's think issue. we should err on the side of caution and have our attorney do a title search. That's Rob's recommendation. Uh, I mean, I can get a I can get a quote from him to have Karen Gramer come in and do it. 
I can tell you that the attorney, I don't think the attorney for what came in here, but did Bryce Sonny come in here and do a title search? I don't remember. No one came in here in our office and did a title search. No one did a title search, so we don't think it has been done. And that those records exist before 2000, so that means that they would have to come into the office to do a title search. But, you know, that's what Rob called me this afternoon to say he would, those were his questions. The pond, who owns the pond, that needs to be clarified. You seem to think that there is some statute that allows the fire department to take water from any pond, and he can't find that statute. So that was one issue. And then the second issue was, he, it was his recommendation that they use Karen Gramer, their prior legal, to do a title search. Did he give you an estimate of hours or time or money or whatever? No. no. Well, if, as, I, as I said, if we want to be super conservative, um, we should do it. I'm not well, saying I, we shouldn't do it. And if it was me and it was my land and my situation, I probably wouldn't do it. But when it's the town, maybe we should do it. That we want, this, this can go in executive session. This is an actually, this follows, this, this is a perfect example of going into executive session because it's a, an attorney-client situation. So should we move into executive session? I, would make that I, I don't yeah. feel like we need to. But. Well, I'll just, so I can, there's no way I can relay the conversation or what I put down on Liz's if, paper without doing that. If we need to speak freely, I, I would make the motion that we go Is there into anything executive else? session. Um, okay, Second. can we actually, to let oh these God. people go, can we finish? Oh, yeah, we just yeah. Let's just finish up the meeting and then we'll go into executive session. Oh, right. um, okay, so um, let's see. I gave an update on the MERP, the Town Hazard Mitigation Plan revision. They haven't reached out to us yet for meetings, as far as I can tell. I look in my emails every day, but I, th I don't think they're there yet. For That would be um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to have our community kickoff meeting, so that hasn't happened yet. Um, correspondence. Um, the only thing that I had a quick correspondence with, which was with a neighbor, um, uh, about his question on front porch form about the Better Roads grant. And I thought we always got Better Roads grants. That's the one why that, is our name not on it? That's the, the, the uh, municipal uh, grant program that Eric talks about. Yeah. And I, and I thought he put in for it, or he's going to put in for it. Yeah. But something happened. Okay, know. so we didn't, so our name doesn't show up on that funding right. source no, no, for no, any year, it didn't this. look like. Yeah. And if you look through the previous years, we weren't on the, those years either. So I think it's just, if it's an ongoing grant, it's something we should look so at. So it's something I'm bringing up on, uh, in Thursday's Perfect. meeting. Um, okay. It's already on the agenda. Great. But we yeah. have had. I thought we had two, yeah. but I went back like three years that's on their list or four years, and there's nothing there. But that's all right. It's, okay. Yeah. And, you know, they're not huge grants. They're like 15000 or something like that. Oh, um, okay. So, um, Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's good. I mean, I'm just saying we. I thought it was a good point for him to bring up, and I, I offered that he join your committee. Yep, and he's welcome to do that. Okay, great. Um, all right, any other correspondence? Nope. Okay, um, any other matters that come before the board? Can I just say one thing? You may, Vic. Thank you. <laughs> I think that, that that grant, those municipal road grants, yep. those are mostly, not always, but mostly for like ditching and stuff. Yeah. And so with with this work that we're having done with FEMA, it would yeah. overlap. And so I think they were backing off. Oh, on that they're backing off. On it. I, I think that's probably going to be the answer, but I'm going to ask the question. Perfect. It is on the agenda, and there's a difference between the Better Roads grant and the this other yeah. municipal. Yeah, I just remember having conversations about. about the Better Roads grant, and so it was probably just, yeah. you know, back in here that never remember. We've got team so. funding finders. So. Team funding. Woo! Okay. So, okay. And so team. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So I think that we will be um, adjourning, temporarily adjourning this meeting. Orca, you can go home. Thank you for coming.